Good evening, and welcome to another one of my episodes of A Verse Day Keeps Islam Away. Today, I'd like to discuss miracles in the Quran, specifically numerology, the gematria. gematria. Um, <clears throat> if you go online and do little searches for miracles of the Quran, you'll find oodles and tons and plethora of all these myste mysterious things that happen in the Quran which just have to make you believe that Islam is the word of Allah that the Quran is the word of Allah so I'd like to go ahead and take a look at some of these miracles or some of these miraculous numbers that just appear here and there and see see if we're, if we're all going to convert to Islam after this video Alright, the webpage I'm going to show you right now is called miraclesofthequran.com Some of the miracles that they're talking about is, for example, the statement, seven heavens, is repeated seven times. And, you know what, I actually checked for seven heavens, and yes, it is repeated seven times. Cool. I want to go to this very last home, because actually, this almost convinced me. It said that the word land appears 13 times in the Quran. And the word C appears 32 times, giving a total of 45 references. Now, if you do the ratio, uh, 13 out of 45 and 32 out of 45, giving you 28% versus, uh, <clears throat> versus 71%, and supposed to be that is the exact proportion of the land to see here on Earth. Well, let's go ahead and look it up. The word land in Arabic is Ard. So here we got Ard. And let's see if Ard actually exists 13 times like it's supposed to. Whoa! 446 times! So, how did they even get 13 when we're actually even getting 446? So, I'm sorry, land appears way more than 13 times. And at this point, I could care less how many times C appears, but you know what, let's just go ahead and look at it just for the heck of it. Bahar. And let's do a quick search for Bahar. Because obviously the formula is not going to work anymore. But Bahar appears in 38 verses in the Quran. Close enough. 38, 32, that's closer than 13 verses 400 and something. You go ahead and look them up yourself and see if you're actually finding the exact numbers as they claim. I would like to look at the word Yom, day. It is supposed to have been repeated 365 times in its singular form. So let's go ahead and look it up. So let's go ahead and count it and see how many times it exists here. I'll tell you what. Uh, instead of actually having to go and try to find the word Yom, uh, day, 365 times in those 417 results, um, let's just go ahead and say that, okay, that is a miracle. The word Yom, day, does appear in the Quran 365 times. That is miraculous. Let's move on. Wait a second. Did I say 365 times? I'm confused. I was under the impression that the Quran and al sana al hijriya the, the, the Hijri calendar, the Muslim calendar, is based upon a lunar system. So, the word day should actually appear 354.3 times, let's just say 355 times. So how does it appear 365 times? Wait a second, could it be a prediction for the Gregorian calendar that would later be invented about four or five hundred years later? Who knows? So, shall we give them that one? Is it a miracle that the word day, which I'm not going to go through and count, 365 instances of it in its singular form exists 365 times when it actually should be 355 times. So, by my perspective, you lose. Now, the next thing I'd like to look at is the miraculous number 19. For some reason, the number 19 happens to be like the most miraculous number in the Quran. Um, I'm really not sure why, but We'll, we'll speculate in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> for example, the phrase Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of God, the merciful, the beneficent, whatever the hell they translate it to, uh, is supposed to have 19 letters. Now, 
The Quran contains 114 surah, 114 chapters. 114 divided by 19 is a whole number. It is six. So, hey, another miracle. You can divide the total number of suar by 19 and you get a whole number. That's a miracle. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I'd like to bring your attention to is al muqatta'at A total of 29 suar begin the chapters with these three letters, three, four, or five, primarily three, <coughs> for the most part, three letters, that, that even though they're connected, they're not read out, they are just read out as individual letters. Like, for example, I'm looking at surah number 29, surah al-ankabut, the spider, it starts with alif, lam, mim, a-l-m. No one's supposed to know what these mean, but Allah. <coughs> so here's what I did. I actually went through, and yes, that's what, that was a little time consuming. I actually went through and I looked through every single surah. And I took all these muqatta'at, these dividers, or also called al-fatihat, because they, the openers, they open up the surah. And I wrote down every single letter for every surah. And just like in Hebrew or Greek, uh, Arabic can have every letter designated to a number. Uh, a, alif, is one. Ba, B, is two. Ya, the, uh, Yod, the Y, is ten. It just it lists them in the proper order. And the proper order is not the order in which the alphabet exists today. It's the original Abjad order, which is Abjad Hawaza Hatti Kalamun Safasa Karashat. That order. You know what I'm talking about. Just in case you want to know, the Arabic alphabet got rechanged the order of it to go by shapes, what looks like the other. Um, anyway, so let me show you what I've done. I took every single muqatta'at from every single one of the surah where it exists. For example, Alif Lam Mim in surah number 2, Kaf Ha Ya Ain Sad in surah number 19, etc., etc., etc. And I correlated the value for each of the letters to its numerical value and I added them up. And I was presented with a number which is 3154. Now, if you recall, the Number 19 is an extremely crucial and important number in the Qur'an. So I decided to try to divide 3154 by 19. Let's see what happens. 3154 divided by 19 happens to be 166. Now, uh, there's a total of 114 surah in the Qur'an, and if you divide that by 19, like we said earlier, you also get the number 6. Now, this is where I'm going to start bringing in religions altogether. Revelations. In the Bible, <clears throat> there's a mention of the beast. <clears throat> and I'm quoting now from the Bible. Um, let me see. Uh, chapter 13, verse number 17 and 18. <clears throat> and that no man should be able to buy or sell, save he has the mark, even the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. He that has understanding, let him count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. So here we're talking about a single man, one, whose number is 666. Let's go back and take a look at what I found in the Quran. If you recall, there's 114 surah, divide that by 19, you get the number 6. There's that value that I got by adding all the muqatta'at, 3154 divided by 19 is 166. Let's put these numbers together. Uh, 166, that's 1, 6, 6, and then the total number of surah divided by 19 is another 6. So it's the name of one man and 666. Six, six. That's what you get when you put these numbers together. There. So, the name of the beast is that of a single man whose number is 666 and we've just proved that that one single man has brought upon 666. Now, what's so special about 19? 
in Revelation chapter 13, verse 17, 18, and that's where it ends. 17 and 18. It is awaiting the 19th. It is awaiting, We're talking about the beast, it is foreshadowing the forecoming of 19. And this is where 19 comes in. That's all I have for today. You have a wonderful evening. And be safe. Stay away from 19. Good night.